everyone likes a great deal, like savings, markdowns, and lunch specials. But when it comes to car insurance, we know the right place. State Farm offers surprisingly great rates for your ride. Your friends don't have to have a connection or call in a favor. State Farm offers options like insuring your ride and your home, getting you great rates on both. Now that's a deal. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or go to statefarm.com for a quote today. Live from the Fireside app, it's the Stacking Benjamin Show. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and what are you drinking today? I'm celebrating the holiday by shotgunning some delicious eggnog because today is National Eggnog Day, marking the anniversary of the eggnog riots, which happens to be my third favorite cocktail-related social upheaval. Today, helping us round out 2021 with a discussion of what we should have learned this year, we welcome, from Afford Anything, storied cocktail researcher Paula Pant. We'll also be joined by a man who looks the way the word eggnog sounds from LenPenzo.com, our local strip club bartender. I'm just kidding. It's it's only Len Penzo. Rounding out the roundtable to compete in our final trivia of the year, fresh from leading the grumpy parade through Frown Town, it's OG. And now, a guy who's that little sprinkle of nutmeg on the nog of life, Joe Saul Sihai. Well, as bad a year as it's been in many ways, it has also been a fantastic year here on the podcast. We're going to celebrate some of that today. We're going to talk about all the things that you should have learned. But more than that, I get to hang out with some of my favorite people, which includes you, Doug. Includes you. It does not. It totally lying. doesn't. I'm, I'm so lying. Yes, but it does include the other guy here in the basement with me. Mr. OG is here. How are you, man? Enjoying life. It j- th- ready to crack Ready to crack the uh, Christmas Eve scotch, which is, uh, I have this bottle that I've had a long time and I have one drink out of it every Christmas Eve. I thought you were going to say ready to crack the uh, trivia challenge uh, win. You're about to, Len Penzo has been at least co-winner the last two years in a row. You get it today. You're the champ, bud. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> it's great. I should have known this last week when I guessed uh, and trying to set it up and, and I, I kind of followed it up. I should have swing and a miss. It a little differently, but you know, who you helped different. though. Oh gee, you helped the woman behind afford anything. And I, and I the story cocktail researcher. I like that. Paula Pant is here storied cocktail researcher, meaning the more cocktails I drink, the more stories I tell. <laughs> you would say that's true, wouldn't you? I would say that's true. Yes. yes. After after prolonged research in this field, <laughs> uh, I, I would say that that hypothesis has been validated. I have had the pleasure of uh, researching cocktails with Paula Pant before, and uh, Paula is a very happy cocktail researcher. Ah, uh, I well, thank you, Joe. I like to think of myself as happy all the time. I simply yes. become myself amplified yes. when I've uh, <laughs> had a had a little eggnog. That's good. And Paula, the guy who needs an amplifier because he's deep under Los Angeles, he's had like a two week hiatus, and he still is almost almost the champ. You're only one away, man. Mister Len Penzo's here. Yeah, so uh, I'm not going to give up on the possible three peat that easily. So, but I liked how I liked how OG was playing it off. I know you want this, OG. I know you want <laughs> so, this badly. Just, just let's to be let's be clear. I'm guaranteed co-champion. <laughs> well, I'm ahead no, by one with uh-uh, one week to no, go. No, 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 no. We, <laughs> Doug, you want to tell him or should I tell him? Oh, we have uh, we have thought of all possibilities of outcome, and we have ensured against. <laughs> Any sort of namby pamby kissing your sister co champion crap. We have got a tiebreaker question. AKA so this what is basically that? just like last year where I got screwed over in the last. <laughs> I just want to make sure that we're just 
Well, just last year, correctly. last year you were co-champion, and we got so much flack, not just from you, but emails that uh, really what Doug's saying is we succumb to peer pressure, and we do have a tiebreaker question. If in the event that that may happen, Len, do they have ties in the Super Bowl? No. Yes. <laughs> they have ties in the World Series. No. Did, did they yeah. tie when the Germans bombed Pearl Harbor? That's right. <laughs> Let him go. He's rolling. <laughs> yes. Paul has no idea that reference. Paula, do you know that reference? Of course I know that reference. Oh. I know history. I just don't know pop culture. December <laughs> of course 7, I know 1941. <laughs> oh, my God, Paula. Oh, Paula. No, you better go back, Paula. Go back. <laughs> Uh, the Japanese bomb Pearl Perfect. Harbor, not the Germans. All right. Perfect. Perfect. Yes. That the Japanese bomb Pearl Harbor, to... December 7th, 1941, a day that will live in infamy. Yeah. Wait, is this a pop culture reference? Yes. 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 yes, because the Germans bomb Pearl Harbor is a line from Animal House. Oh. Oh, my. Yeah, I don't It's know. a movie. Oh, it was a comedic movie. <laughs> directed by John Landis. Yes. Ah, but good news. So, so Paul is already ready for the next trivia. <laughs> She's, like, <laughs> She's like, December 7th, 1941. I know it. There it is. I won it. Game over. We got trivia coming up later, but before that, we're going to ask you the question. We asked Clark Howard on Wednesday this question. We're asking all of you, what should we have learned from the events of 2021? So we're going to get two each from you. We're live on Fireside. Maybe we'll get some more events or thoughts about 2021 from the people that we're hanging out with here live. But first... When you join M1 Finance, you'll see why they call it the Finance Super App. Everything you need to do... More with every dollar packed into one super powered app. Super, with just a, super powered. Super powered app. With just a few taps, you can invest with ease, borrow with flexibility, or spend with security. It's all about the power of those traditionally bloated apps on a sleek, intuitive platform. Investing involves risk and borrowing increases that risk, but M1 makes it easy to invest according to exactly how risky you want to be. How risky do you want to be, OG? How risky do I want to be? Uh, what's greater than 100 on the scale of 1 to 100? <laughs> it's obvious why hundreds of thousands of investors are making the switch and have trusted M1 with over $5 billion in assets. And Investopedia named them best for sophisticated investors two years running, or why they have 35,000 five-star reviews in the App Store and Google Play. Plus, get this, Joe, get a $30 bonus with your M1 Invest account when you get approved and fund it with $1,000 within the first 14 days. Head to m1finance.com slash SB to get started. That's M, the number one, finance.com slash SB. Terms and conditions apply. All right, let's get this party started. I feel like 20, 2020, even though it was horrible with the pandemic, was the year I got to hang out with Len Penzo. 2021, the year I got to hang out with Paula Pant. So I feel like we're uh, an OG you and I saw a few times, it, it, you know, recorded a few episodes together and uh, got to hang out with Doug. Three, three just times a, a week bit. for an yes, entire year. That's right. Uh, but what did we learn? What should we have learned? And not from recording these together, but from the events of 2021. And Paula... Well, we'll go ladies first here. Paula, give us an event from 2021 and kind of what you feel like we should have taken from it. One of the biggest financial lessons that I learned this year was uh, to take cryptocurrency seriously and to take blockchain, the underlying technology behind cryptocurrency seriously, uh, to not dismiss it as a fad, despite the fact that some of the antics of its most enthusiastic practitioners can be a distraction from the actual social and technological and economic value of the underlying thing itself. You know, so I, I, be, I learned to look past the veneer, look at crypto and take it for what it is and uh, understand that it's here to stay and that this is something to be paying attention to. Let, let me ask you, is that the same for you? Was 2021 the year that you said, you know what? Okay, crypto, let's, let's take it seriously. No, I'm the absolute opposite. <laughs> if you ask me, and it, I've written about it on my blog, I, crypto, and I'm sure I'll get tons of hate mail because I know the crypto people are very passionate. It's a purely a speculative play. So, um, you know, that's not what I learned from crypto this year. Actually, this was one of my three things too, Paul. <laughs> Only my, I came across with a different conclusion than you. Mine was, you know, speculate at your own risk. 
from this. Uh, so. I want to get back to the speculation point, and actually, we'll come back to you right away for that as soon as we talk about this one, and we'll just put these two together as our one-two punch, Len. But do you think that what Paul is saying about the underlying value of it, you're looking at, at El Salvador now in cryptocurrency as a country, you're looking at the rise of NFTs and not, you know, the blocky pictures that everybody's buying for bajillions of dollars, but the fact that you've got this proof of ownership system, which is way, way more foolproof than a lot of the ownership records that we have now, like those pieces. Uh, do you believe in those? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's the thing. The danger is conflating cryptocurrencies with blockchain technology. Blockchain technology is incredible. There are lots of applications for that, for showing proof of ownership and chains of custody. And there are all kinds of things. It's kind of like the internet when it first started. A lot of people who saw how the internet could be exploited in the earliest days became extremely wealthy utilizing that internet as technology. And the same is out there right now with blockchain technology. There are tons of applications that you can use for blockchain technology that's going to make people very wealthy. You're drawing very a hard wealthy. line between the latest, uh, you know, the latest coin that's out and the fadism and the technology. Yes, there's a sharp line. And one is you can speculate. Cryptocurrencies to me is purely speculative. Yes, it uses blockchain technology, but um, cryptos are not as in, this is as I see it, and I go into great detail in my blog on why I won't do that here. It that is not a store of value. It is not. It cannot be used as that. Mainly because it is not self-referential. It always must be valued in terms of something else. But what? the blockchain, the blockchain technology. My goodness, that is. That is gold. Yeah. That is gold. And that is something that you need to be looking at companies that are going to use blockchain technology and exploit it. That's where the money is. I eventually. think there's a in the meantime, yeah. Yeah. In the meantime, you can make a people there's no doubt people have made a fortune. Well, I want to get back Bitcoin and I want to get back to that piece because that's that's getting into that whole speculation thing. And I want to get definitely get back to that. But OG, I want to bring you into this discussion because do you also draw that hard line between the two different sides that Len's drawing? Well, I've spent a lot less time on it than Len in terms of exploring. I have it on my list of list of things to do over the Christmas holiday. Learn about, about I can't even say it, about blockchain. Learn how to say it correctly would be step one. Um, but I do agree. I mean, the crypto stuff is 1 million percent speculation and it's not money yet. It might be someday, but it isn't yet. It's just a thing. And that thing is worth whatever the group of people who are, who, you know, which is a lot of people decide that it's worth at that moment. And, uh, you know, you can make money speculating, you can make money speculating on all sorts of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, there's that, but I do agree that the technology is great and, you know, I'm interested in learning more about it. Uh, and by the way, uh, you know, the fact that you and I have talked a lot about it and you say that you don't know much about it shows just how deep the knowledge base I think needs to go. But also I was watching a uh, friend of ours, uh, Douglas Bonaparte on a Yahoo publication, and he was talking about how from the advisor standpoint, as you know, OG, a lot of advisors still not taking it still not taking it seriously. And the second that a client brings it up wants nothing to do with it. And his point was, if you, regardless of your thoughts about crypto, if you don't understand it, you don't have at least a little depth of knowledge, which I feel like you already have, you're going to, you're going to lose a, a section of a potential client base that you could have had. Do you agree with him that some advisors are going to be losing business because they don't take it seriously and just poo poo it? Well, again, I, I think that it has more to do with the technology, you know, than it does the quote unquote currency and the speculation therein. It's no different than, I mean, Len, Len talked about it perfectly. If you were in business, whether it's a financial, financial planning business or any business, but if you were in business in 1997 and thought, hey, I don't want to spend any time or energy thinking about this internet thing, because I'm pretty sure it's not going to go anywhere from here, yes. you know? That's what I'm you talking were, about is the relationship you the with your client that, that you're going to lose clients if you don't at least understand how this stuff works. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's, I don't know that you'll lose them, but just like anything, I think you're, you would be expected to have a professional opinion. And if your professional opinion is, I don't know anything about it, <laughs> then, then, then you're in trouble. You know, yeah, I think so. Yeah. 
Uh, Len, back to you, because you brought up what we're going to call our second point, your first point, which is speculate at your own risk. So dig into that, because it seems like, you know, we had meme stocks this year, right? We had crypto this year. We had NFTs. Um, We've had a lot of speculate. We've had speculation in the real estate market. Maybe we'll get into that, too. I don't know. But a lot of speculation, but not a lot of people paying for it yet. Uh, No, not. You're right. And and, and let's let's talk about that real quick. Did you know, because... I, as part of the little research for this uh, this topic that I knew we were getting, uh, I looked up the five biggest search terms on Google in this year. And oh, it's going to be great. No, no. Th- well, three of the five. Here were th- here were three of the five, and I can't remember the order they were in, and I don't know what was what. But these three were in the top five: AMC, the theaters, right? GME, GameStop, right? Um, and Dogecoin. Yeah. As of press time here. Those are the three biggest search terms in 2021 on Google. All of those, it's no coincidence that all of those are speculative uh, plays, basically. People were interested in trying to make a quick buck. And in, in the case of Dogecoin, you, <laughs> if you can believe this, it was a penny in January. It was a pe- actually it was under a penny. Yeah. And by May 8th, it was 73 cents. On May 12th, four days later, so so by then, I think we were even talking about it here on Stacking Benjamins. Somebody was mentioning Secretary. They knew somebody who who jumped in, put their dipped their toe in the water on Dogecoin right around that time frame. Four days later, it, the price of it dropped to 39 cents a share. So I don't know, you know, if, if you put in, say, $1,000 on Dogecoin, I mean, you lost almost half your money in four days. And by June, it was down to 19 cents. Today, it's hovering around 16 cents. But even then, if you look at it, if you bought somewhere in January or February, you're up all over 5,000%. So depending on when you buy makes a big deal on these speculative plays. So you can see people getting rich, but if you jump in at the wrong time, uh, and of course, you don't do your homework, you don't know why you're doing it, you just think it's going to be a pure momentum play – People, you could you could be on the wrong end of that and lose terribly. So you just have to be careful. Paula, lots of speculation in the water this year and a lot of people speculating on why people speculate. <laughs> What's your take? Why do you think so many people were into speculation in 2021? Well, you know, in 2020, a lot of people either lost their jobs or began to work remotely, meaning that they no longer had a commute and some of the the other ancillary time consuming you know hours consumed as a result of having to physically go to an office and and in addition to that um the world shut down and we had social distancing and people couldn't go to movies or restaurants or concerts and so people were at home more and they had more time on their hands and that often lends itself to internet deep dives and then it doesn't take too many steps to go from internet deep dive to a uh, group of redditors deciding to take down Wall Street by loading into GameStop and AMC theaters. So I think that part of the reason, you know, and that is a a set of conditions that began in 2020, but continued to exist even in 2021. Mm. And so I think that the interest that people took in speculative investing based on just having the time to do so, um, coupled with the fact that Everything was in a bull market, and so people didn't have to feel the pinch. Like they didn't have to um, deal with losses. Like uh, those those two factors came together to really fuel that bubble, that speculative bubble. Yeah. Uh, OG. So taking all that, assuming that you you agree with what Len and, and Paula talked about. And maybe you don't. So maybe there's something else there. Uh, uh, do you still get in? Are you telling people, you know, to d- d- people come to you and they're like, I want to speculate on crypto, want to speculate on a meme stock? What do you tell them? Well, it's funny because one of my uh, things here listed was the market's going to remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent. Well, we're going to go, and- <laughs> we can go there next. Or do you want to go there right now? No, I'm just saying that it kind yeah. of all piles together, yeah. you know, whether it's the irrationality of, Dogecoin going from a penny to a dollar back to 25 cents. And basically like somewhere in there, you either made a whole bunch of money or lost a whole bunch of money. You know, like I don't, I've never met anybody that's like, well, I'm kind of even money on crypto. You know, I'm up like 6%, you know, yeah. a little boarding. But, um, up 60 or uh, down 60. Yeah. The, uh, the answer is, uh, you know, as it relates to any sort of speculation is it depends on if you're on track for the, the rest of the stuff that's going on in your life. 
you know, if you are working on financial independence or you're working on paying off your credit card bills or you're working on funding your kid's college and your way to do that is by dumping all your money in Dogecoin and hoping that Elon Musk tweets about something so it goes up so you've got enough money to bank the tuition payment this year, that's probably the wrong way to do it. If you got everything else good to go and you're like, and also I want to put a thousand bucks on this and see what happens. Totally fine. Absolutely. But you the were, criteria is, are you yeah. on track for everything else? Yeah. You were talking uh, earlier that the market will remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent. Let's talk about markets being irrational. You, you just said it here, but Charlie Munger, the famous investor and partner of Warren Buffett said that, uh, as we record about a week ago, said that he thought this was crazier than, you know, 1999, the lead up to the big 2000 drop. Does this feel like to you that, uh, we're in more rational times than we were back in 2000? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, the reason has to do with liquidity, I think. And there's there's all sorts of other kind of dominoes there, I suppose. But just purely looking at the stock market for the stock market's sake of saying, you know, well, it's it's at an all-time high, so I probably shouldn't invest right now. Um, doesn't really make a lot of sense because statistically, the stock market's pretty much always at an all-time high. I mean, that's it pretty much always goes up, except for little periods of time where it goes down. So, um any, any sort of like kind of guessing as to, well, I would have invested if the Dow was at this, but now it's at that. So I can't, you know, you're just setting yourself up for failure because 20 years from now, I think it's pretty safe to say that the market will be higher than it is today. So, you know, you have to stick to the plan. You stick to it on both sides of the equation, you know, whether it's things are going down a whole bunch. We don't say, what do we say then? Like, oh, it's down a whole bunch. I should wait. No, we say, well, no, you should keep on investing. Stay, stay, stay on plan. Stay the course. And if it goes up, you should stay on plan then too. You know, the day-to-day fluctuations or year-to-year fluctuations, you know, really shouldn't matter much. I like where OG's headed there, Len, but he didn't really answer my question, which is it crazier? Does it feel crazier? It feels crazy to me. Um, but, you know, what, what I, you know, I'm one of those suckers. I've been sitting on the sidelines for a little while <laughs> now uh, because, uh, seriously, I've lost a lot of money sitting on the sidelines with not jumping into some of these stocks that, you know, I've thought the market has been topped for a while. But doesn't the last six months feel crazier than all that put together? Yes, it it. It it does. It, I mean, it does I just, to me too. I I just sent something out today on Twitter. I, I retweeted as a, a Tavi Costa, somebody I follow. But he pointed out that Nasdaq is it's two point six percent from its all time highs, but and only thirty five percent of its members are above the two hundred day moving average. Okay, so it, it's it's basically. It's like the whole stock market to me is being driven by the big five, you know, Microsoft and uh, Alphabet, Facebook and Google, yeah. Facebook, te- uh, Tesla, yeah. which Tesla's a whole not. I mean, that one really, OG, you got right. You thought that thing was topped and it wasn't. It kept going after you, you, you sold, you made a good profit, right? I mean, it's yeah. just Tesla just goes up and, and, and then up it, and then it and cratered up. a whole bunch back down in the 900s. I don't know where it is now, but yeah. Yeah. But I remember, you know, I have a colleague. I remember when he, he bought Tesla, it was down. It was really, it was. I forget, but he was a hundred dollars or something a share. It was really ridiculously cheap and uh, he retired. So I don't know where he's at now, but I, I really curious, you know, uh, how long he held on to that stock. Cause he was really talking it up. This is many years ago, but he, he was really into D- Tesla back then. So Paul, and, and good for him. But, uh, yeah. but that just, that just actually, pro- I think proves the point, which is to say that, you know, you, you can't go into an investing philosophy saying, I have an idea of what stocks are going to do well, you know, or the ones that are, I'm going to try to avoid because you're right. I think, you know, whatever the stat is of the day about like, you know, the, the you know, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Google, Netflix, whatever, you know, that has been recently controlling the vast majority of the movement of, of these indexes. And so hand to God, the minute that you or I land go, screw it, we'll just buy those stocks. Guess what's going to happen? It'll be like, I know. That's why real estate I know. in Europe is, seems to be leading the market. <laughs> like, you know, so, you know, that, that is the reason that you have to be diversified. That is the reason why you have to own the other 495 stocks in the S and P because yeah. you can't prove that these other ones are going to do well. And, and I think that also lines up with why the, the market, whatever you want to call it, isn't necessarily overvalued because yeah, maybe Microsoft is, maybe Facebook is, and probably 
Tesla is for sure, right? But but does that mean what what about the other 495? What God forbid they actually start doing well? Then what happens? You know, it, it just it's very interesting, though. I mean, it's it I mean that you're making the when we say when we talk about these big five stocks carrying the overall ind- indices, uh, you know, the Nasdaq or the S&P or the, the Dow, Dow, what right? have you. Um, I mean, it just goes to show you how the index investors have really <laughs> they've really made out, you know, because they're they're being protected right now by these big five. Now, I don't know how long that goes on. I mean, remember the nifty 50 back in the 70s, right? The, this, the same kind of thing was happening back then with the nifty 50. At some point, there was only the nifty 50 became like the nifty five. But people were still talking about the nifty 50. Uh, but then that all came crashing down eventually eventually but when you don't know when this could go on forever i don't know <laughs> apollo got crushed in that 70s nifty 50 thing i know right seriously <laughs> i wasn't even going to ask you about the 2000 thing to ask you if it's weirder but it certainly paula does it feel weird to you the past few months i mean the past year has felt weird you know the the i've seen the market do things in the last year that i've i haven't seen yeah. since 2005 it's when like, i really it's yeah. like the market handed its beer to 2020 and said here hold this Right. right, exactly. Watch what I'm going to do now. Yeah. You, you know what I will say, though? One thing that's really dangerous that I think I've noticed, and this is – it's even creeping into me right now, and it's dangerous. But what's happening is now is very dangerous. People investing, they want to make 100% right now with this year. They want to they want humongous home run returns right now, whereas in the past, it used to be, hey, 10% return for a year. That's I'm happy. Yeah. That's great. No and more. now it seems like people are disappointed, you know, if they're not getting a, a you know, hitting a hundred percent return in one year or a 200 or 300. That's where know? it feels really weird to me, Len. I mean, I remember 1999 getting fired by a client because he only did 47%. Exactly. Yes. I, I mean, go on Twitter and, and just read people's, I mean, people are upset, you know, if they're not getting, you know, a two, a, a two bagger or a three bagger this year. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good place to end it and move into, oh boy, I hope everybody stretched out because here comes the trivia challenge. This is it, guys. For those of you who are brand new to our trivia challenge, we have had a year-long competition and this is it. This is the final chapter in this year's competition. OG has 16, Len has 15, and Paula one last time to make sure that she's staying alive. Paula also now has 15. So Paula can win this. Paula. Paula can, can win this. Anybody. Paula can co, co-win it. Yep. <laughs> there could be a co-win. There'd be no co-winner. No, 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 no. If Paula gets the question right and she gets the tiebreaker, then That's yes, right. she can win. Mm-hmm. Then she'll be the winner. But at the end of the first question, she or Len could be the co-winner. The only person that can win it outright here is OG. So enough Enough play- I'm just proud to be tied for second. <laughs> we, 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 tied for second. Tied for last. Three. What I'm proud of is we. F- <laughs> what I'm proud of is that we finally have a trophy. So we we, we have a trophy. We uh, may tell you. Well, we'll tell you about the trophy later. Also, the guy that said that there will be a cake has not emailed me since. So. <laughs> He's, uh, he may have bailed on the cake. So the cake is a lie? The cake might be a lie. Oh! That's right. <laughs> I think you might have even lost Len on that one, but that's a phenomenal one. Oh, I don't care. I don't need the cake. I got enough problems. Yep, no, but you see. know the cake is a lie? You know that? Cake is a lie. Yes. That's from a popular does, video game. Does Doug get it? Doug? Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Doug's like, you don't ask me. I, I don't get it. that one. Yeah. we didn't, it, it is from a popular video game where they promise you cake and then halfway through the game, you find out the cake is a lie. Oh, wait. Like, that's not that. Uh, oh, oh, what's the name called, of the game? It's called Portal. Portal. Oh, no, that's not the one. How yeah. come no okay. one asked me if I got that reference? I didn't. <laughs> but, <you know. laughs> wow. Really? <laughs> We're just exhausted, Paula. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we thought we'd save some time here in the middle so we can get to the second half of this. Speaking of that, Doug, let's roll on this. Hey there, stackers. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug. This is the last trivia of the year on this most sacred day of eggnog. Gather around the fire and listen to old Uncle Doug recount this tragic holiday tale. "'Twas the night before Christmas in 1826 when the cadets at West Point drank themselves into a ditch. Their drink of choice? 
eggnog. When a superior officer tried to break up the party, dozens of cadets ran through the halls with swords, muskets, and bayonets, breaking down windows and smashing furniture. 19 of the students were court-martialed in what became known as the eggnog riots. Now, as we all know... Sorry. As we all know, I didn't even think, by the way, I did not think this was a real thing. This is so real. (laughs) It's so real. Until Paulette and Doug and Doc G explained to me, no, this is a real, this really happened. Can I, can I, can I? Sorry, man. Yeah, we got to. Okay. Sorry. I'm trying to get the magic back. As we all know, eggnog is made with eggs, confectioner's sugar, cream, some secret ingredient that makes you dance better, and nutmeg. And if you're my Uncle Jim, you throw in an entire bottle of rum. So my question is, for the 2021 Stacking Benjamins World Championship title, or at least to uh, force a tie for that title, <laughs> I thought we'd go with a question of national concern yes. to a country that suffered from a pandemic for two whole years. Here it is. How much is the most expensive bottle of rum at the most notorious liquor store right here in Texarkana, <laughs> Chubby Cheeks? A hint... I'm talking about a 750 milliliter bottle aged for 25 years. So, once again, how much is Chubby Cheeks going to tap you for that pricey bottle? I'll be back with the answer right after I go pray to the porcelain gods. (laughs) Of course, we end with the trivia of national concern. How much? And here's the order. Uh, Len is a returning champion, which means he is going to go second. Paula, you still get to go third. Oh, gee, you are kicking this thing off because you're the leader going into the last week. What? How much is Chubby Cheeks going to tap your chubby wallet who, for? Who, who is Chubby Cheeks? Chubby Cheeks is the liquor store on I-30. That is, uh, oh, yes, okay. 750 milliliter bottle, 25-year-old rum. Of the most expensive. This is the most expensive one in the store. In the store at Chubby Cheeks. <sighs> Do I get to know what kind of what kind it is? Uh, you know, yeah. it's their most expensive rum, and it's a seven hundred fifty milliliter bottle, and it's twenty five <laughs> year old rum. But I mean, can you tell me like what brand? We no, can, yeah, no, we cannot. We cannot tell you what brand. No. So it could be it could be Mister Chubby Cheeks' own yeah. personal bottle. Yes. Could be from right between his chubby cheeks for all you know. <laughs> oh, boy. oh man. Well, there's an aging Once process. Again, there's, there's a line again. God damn. This is such I thought I thought I was I thought I was in it with a military question. I was like, oh, I'm gonna know this one. This has to do with West Point and the military. I'm gonna nail it. Psych, just kidding. Uh, how much is the most expensive? 25 year old bottle of rum at some random liquor store in not random chubby cheese at, random, at Joe's <laughs> I mean, mom's house down I 30. I'm out loud. Is oh, it on gee, the Texas side or the Arkansas Great question. This is this is just a throw throw the number out. It could be this any. is on this is on the Arkansas side, Paula. On the Arkansas side of, of the I, Texarkana. Yes, that's a good border. question, Paula. Yes, great question. Uh, so it's a lot less high quality over there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, and we lost our Texarkana. There Arkansas. goes, there so goes all the people from Arkansas. Okay. Um, generically speaking, it's a liquor store of ill repute. Ill repute. So, uh, I'm going to say the most expensive bottle in the store at Chubby Cheeks is for a fifth of a fifth of rum. Uh, carry the one inflation, uh, ninety four dollars and ninety nine cents. Ninety four ninety nine, Mister Penzo. I was going to be in that vicinity, but see, I got to be careful now because I don't want to be sandwiched. I could be, I could be sandwiched by Paula. Uh, Let's see. So I got to give myself some room from OG. Hmm. 25 year rum. I don't know. Let's go. It's art. See, it's, it's in a weird, it's in Texarkana. So what's, what is the market for some expensive rum? You know, would there be a market? Would they have it? Oh, also an excellent question. And we're talking about rum, not known for 
you know, being high value. I was excited while you're deliberating on this. I was excited that uh, th- th- either Doug, OG, and I, who live in, in mom's basement, could have driven down to Chubby Cheeks and found out. But no, our awesome writer, Paulette, who lives in Seattle, called Chubby Cheeks <laughs> to find out. I would, t- I would say we could drive down and get the answer, usually in the time it takes Len to deliberate right. his answer. <laughs> Uh, it, this is strategy now because this has nothing to do with you know I've got to I've got to figure out this is this has nothing to do with the price of rum anymore. This is just it's like game it's like game theory almost. I've got to pick a number that somehow puts me in the ballpark, but Paula can't just Chelsea Brennan me permanently. So I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna I've got to make a huge spread just because I have no. I'm gonna pick a number with. I'm gonna say I don't know. Four hundred and fifty dollars. Wow. Well, no, and that's because I'm playing game theory here. So you can go right below me, Paula, or you can go above me. But that's well, uh, that's what that's what I have to do. I'm glad you explained that because generally Paula starts off by saying, you know, I have two choices. (laughs) 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 Or you could go above OG, too. Good. You can go above OG. You can go below OG. But it's closest. There's such a huge window that Len just created. Yeah, I have that to. It's, and it's the closest. Yeah, so but that's why that I did it. So that doesn't really help her out that much. You well, kind of hosed everybody, Len. The guy in the middle gets screwed here in this in this position. That's me. So I, I really have to. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure the person who has to randomly set the mark. <laughs> well, yeah, that's always the worst. Can that, we go, that, that's can the we worst, go over but, what the answers were? OG, yours was $94.99. Uh, not including tax, but yes. <laughs> and Lens, yours was 400 and... 50, I think I said. Is that what I said? $450. Yes, 450 $450 flat. All right. So take the average. All right, so the average of the two is 272 <laughs> 49. You don't think it's less than 94? You know, I'd contemplated that when I heard, <laughs> when I heard the question the listen first time. Listen to Doug tra- or listen to Len trying to like. I am. You got he's it. He's like, I want all the upside and half the difference between where you are. <laughs> well, it'd be better for me if she went below. This is the real, this is where the real game happens. That's, oh, that's, so that, is, that is gamesmanship right there. It. You probably want to be right below that number, don't you? You want zero to 94, 98. You definitely don't want from the, from the halfway point where Paula was was thinking halfway <laughs> all the way to infinity you don't want that hey i you, admit it i admit it i think my answer is going to be 271 dollars. 200 and so she did she split the uprights okay so uh here's holy cow <laughs> doug do you know who our winner is i do you do okay good because i don't I do. that's that's how good this is all right here we go uh we'd love to tell you who the winner is But we'll be right back. We talked about uh, earlier in the week, all that stuff that you do, OG, with Pokemon cards on the internet and how that's going to end up getting you in trouble. You got to watch out which sites you go to when you're buying the Pokemon cards. Especially when you're doing it at the hotel. People are starting to travel a little bit more now. Right. Whip open your computer and you start pounding away on that free free Wi-Fi from the Marriott. And about halfway through your session, you realize everybody can read what I'm typing. Yes, they're in on your latest purchase. When we talk about ways to handle that, the best way to handle it was a virtual private network. If you've never heard of that, it significantly boosts your online privacy and security. All you do is you go through that portal and it's impossible for people to know where you are, to, to know what your online footprint what is. What you're up to. Yes. And it also makes it very close to impossible for hackers to get back through the other way. So everything is routed through remote server. You can access websites without them knowing where you're coming from. If you need secure online data, like you're working in open places like OG you were talking about earlier, if you don't want to sit and look and make sure every website you use has that S on the end. Remember you're looking for HTTPS, not just HTTP. That's the security function. Of course, cyber criminals, the third parties always looking at you and where you're at block them. 
because a VPN encrypts all of your internet traffic. So you don't need to worry about unsecure websites and people tracking you or injecting malware into your device. The price of it? Well, it's equivalent to buying a cup of coffee every month, a small price to pay for premium cybersecurity and access to vast amounts of entertaining content. There's a 30-day money-back guarantee if NordVPN isn't for you, so there's no risk. And you can grab NordVPN's Cyber Month deal. Listen to this, OG. You go to nordvpn.com slash stacker or use code stacker when you check out. You're going to get up to 73% off your NordVPN plan plus a bonus gift nordvpn.com slash stacker or use code stacker when you get to check out and you'll get 73% off your NordVPN plan plus a bonus gift. Happy holidays to you, stacker. I would have done it at 70% off. <laughs> they have me at 65. They're giving away money. Thank goodness Doug knows who the winner is. You were going to say something, Doug, before we went to Just, break. Yeah. I mean, what I think is amazing and I think our listenership has already picked up on is that these genius financial minds we have spend way more time thinking about our trivia than they do with anything having to do with personal finance. We have listeners who are looking to you as the oracles of their future finances. And now they know you don't give a rip about that. Oh, come on. We're it's all a good about discussion the trivia about the 2021 Bitcoin revolution. It was okay, I suppose. Yes. No, good stuff. But <laughs> but I do agree. You can you can hear the tension. You can feel it. Uh, OG, you kicked it off with 94.99. Paula surprised us by going midway between the two. What do you think? Uh, I think that it's that it's lower than that because um, nobody drinks rum in Texarkana. That's well. what I'm going to go with. So <laughs> we'll see. And then, Len, you got the high number, but Paula kind of went halfway to spoil your fun some. Well, I, I agree with OG because my original guess was going to be $99. That was originally I was going to go with 99 because I figured it's, you know, I'm sorry, Arkansas, but I just figured that nobody's going to be buying 25-year-old rum in Arkansas. They're just going to go get the... Oh, they would buy know. it. It just wouldn't be the expensive 25 year Well, whatever. Rum. Yeah, but I, didn't, you, I don't think anybody's going to spend a bar. huge amount of money on really expensive rum, but... I was forced into going, making some huge spread just to have any chance of having any range of possible winning. So and I then, don't feel good. And then Paula, I, think, uh, Paula, I think OG's got this. You think Paula. so? Paula, you're I in the middle there at 271. What are you thinking? Yeah, it was really a roll of the dice, you know, because I... Because I... the last time you were at Chubby Cheeks, you don't remember how much <laughs> they charge for that rum. <laughs> you know, it, it's really a matter of... Um, you can justify higher prices and everything else. Oh, no, in that's clever. I like right? that, Paula. Like, yeah. is is that their their pricing strategy? I mean, not ha having never been to Chubby Cheeks, I don't know how strategic their pricing is. Here we go. We ready? Let's see. Man, this is close. Let's see who do we have a champion or not? Let's see. Hey there, eggnog. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, I'm a little bit tipsy from all the eggnog. It's eggnog poisoning survivor and bathroom cleanup boy, Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug. Some people think the name eggnog originated from a term for watered down rum, grog. In this theory, the drink, which started as egg and grog, became eggnog. Once it's drinkers got too drunk to speak, as I may or may not be right now, I wouldn't water down the rum from today's question because that would make for one expensive trip to the bathroom. In my eggnog, I had the Ron Flor de Cana, which Joe's mom went down to the chubby cheeks to get me special. And how much did she spend for that 750 milliliter, 25 year old bottle of heaven? $165. Our winner was just $70.01 off of the correct answer, which means OG is our out and out champion for 2021. Hey. Congratulations, OG. <laughs> Ooh, la, la. Wow. Man, well deserved, sir. I didn't think he had a chance when he guessed that, but Len, you just you opened the barn door. And everything the four fifty. Well, yeah. What, what was the what was the tiebreak question? Oh, the tiebreak question, there, Joe. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Let's just because we had a fun year this year, and and because it explains what OG is going to win. Let's uh, let's do. Well, you know what? No, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. Nope. <laughs> oh my god. We're not going to tell you any of that. We're going to go what? on to the second half of the show.
I got to tell you guys, I was surprised by that first half because it was crypto, crypto and, uh, and strange markets. So those were big, big, big lessons, all kind of your first lessons of 2021. And of course, now we are headed into our second lesson. And maybe we might even have some from our fireside people hanging out with us. So uh, Paula, back to you. What is another thing that you learned in 2021? So inflation. Uh, Inflation. Never heard of it. I know, right? (laughs) It's people, I think, for... Are you, are you wrestling your microphone? I am. Yeah, <laughs> I am. I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm, well, um, I'm curled up on a section of my floor. Right. So. Wow. <laughs> like in a fetal position? Or that's <laughs> the year really hit you pretty hard. That's how bad, that's how bad she's worried about inflation, Doug. Wow. I know, right? Just therapy I know. for Paula? I'm, I'm laying on a hardwood floor. Yeah. Thinking about inflation. Rocking back and forth. <laughs> I ha- it's okay, I have Paula. like a chunk okay. of a chocolate chip cookie in my hand. Yeah, yeah, it's it's real uh, It's real sad over here. But yeah, no, uh, as I lay here on my floor thinking about inflation. Um, uh, you know, I think that was one of the, that's another one of the lesson, lessons of 2021 slash realities of 2021. Like those of us who have never lived or invested through a period of high inflation, uh, you know, we've learned of it in theory, but we don't yet have the memories of what that experience is actually like. And I think that one of the things that we're beginning to learn in 2021 that we'll probably continue to learn as we go into 2022 is the reality of what it means to live in an inflationary environment. And I mean that in, in every regard, not just the, um, impact that it has when you go to buy a house or fill a tank of gas or, you know, buy groceries, but also what that means and how that changes your investor psychology when it comes to buying stocks, um, bonds, any, any asset. Yeah. That's interesting that Len, as I was at the grocery store, I spent $170. I feel like I bought next to nothing. And I was, I was just thinking about you and the honeybee walking around the grocery store thinking that this is crazy the the amount we're seeing inflation right now yeah but uh and and if you look at the cpi like the official cpi i think came out for november of 6.8 percent and and they're saying that's the highest since 1982 the problem is it around 1980 81 they began changing the methodology for how they calculate the cpi so my point is if they're showing 6.8 percent inflation now officially with the CPI, it's really probably closer to double that. And that's what uh, – if you go like to a place like Shadow Stats and John Williams who still tracks inflation using the old methodology, that's what he finds. Now, something else that's interesting about inflation that uh, people might uh, find interesting is that uh, as inflation gets worse, especially your percentage of your expenditures, especially if you're low or middle class, goes up more for food and it begins to decrease for things like your utilities. Mm-hmm. So food becomes the one area that really begins eating up your budget. That's where you really got to watch. Rent actually will go down if it gets really out of hand. Uh, historically, rents will take up a much smaller portion of your uh, expenditures in a high inflationary environment. It's food that you really got to watch for. As a matter of fact, at the height of Weimar, I'm looking at some stats right now, uh, at the peak of the hyperinflation, the really high inflation that was going on there in 1921, 60% of the average public's uh, pay was going to food. So, I so, mean, that's kind of scary. So, Len, is that to it. say that it's not so much that things like rent are going down in price, it's just that those things that are more commoditized are going up in price and other things are staying level so that it changes the balance of where your money's going? Yeah, because the landlords proportion. won't the, – the landlords usually had – you know, if, if it was rent – uh, well, if you had a fixed rate mortgage, yeah. you didn't feel it. You didn't feel right. any increase, right? But right. if you were and if you were renting, your landlords usually had maybe on a one year lease. So, um, and then they were afraid to to raise anyway. So, but buying those double stuffed Oreos back in the Weimar Republic, that's going to kill like you. Yeah, so, and that's where bank, you really yeah. got to watch. It's the food that's the real killer. So, oh, Doug's like, watching them. He's watching them go right down the pie hole. <laughs> 
<laughs> but my, my point being is w- one thing you can do to help is, um, and I'm doing this actually, is you can use like cans of corn, for example. You can buy a case of corn or, you know, or two cases or what have you, and you will actually – You'll earn a return if if prices are going up at say seven percent or ten percent a year for that can that case of corn. I mean, you've earned ten percent. It's from, the every man's uh, way of playing the commodities market. Yeah, it is. I mean, <laughs> but, but think of it that way. You're basically earning money off of that food, if you will. Buying so, power, at least saving. You're, you're earning saving. buying you're power. Prepaying it. Yeah, yeah you're, you're prepaying. prepaying and you're saving. You're protecting yourself that way against inflation. You're buying so, an option just, on the uh, on the yes. corn market. Exactly. 99 cent increments. I think that the biggest issue with inflation for people who are saving, I think, Len, you're right, for low income, middle income, the food expense is just astronomical and something you have to pay attention to as you kind of transition into longer term savings is the disparity between what you're getting for your, you know, fixed income stuff and what that fixed income stuff is buying. You know, as inflation goes up, your fixed income rates aren't necessarily going to trend in the same direction at the same veracity. And so your savings account is paying half a percent, yet inflation is 6%. You're you're losing purchasing power astronomically. Very, very safely losing money. Very safely losing a crap load of money (laughs) in terms of spending. And so the only place that you can put money that rises with inflation is is into your you know equity positions because dividends go up over time at a rate higher than inflation which sounds somewhat counterintuitive it's like if the market's going to get crazier the thing to protect me from the craziness is buying more of the crazy stuff you know and having more more money exposed to things that have a likelihood of outpacing inflation because if it is a long term thing like the 70s and early 80s the only place that makes sense is, is in the, the biggest companies in the world because they, they have pricing power, right? Which they will continue. Which, which protects them. The fact that they're able to inflate the cost of their goods and people still buys them protects them. Yeah. And but it's not, it's not members. all stocks, right? It's the, the, it's the correct stocks. It's the correct – it's usually it's the defensive stocks, right, OG? It would be like the, the Con Agras, the food companies, the well, back to, utilities. Back to, the, back to the point at hand, which five are going to lead the, lead the way over the next 10 years. Right. You and I don't know, so we might as well just own the basket of them, and we'll get the good ones and the not so good ones. Well, I will, you know, I would out. say though, I think you can you can be biased if you know it's a you know we're, this inflationary environment is going to be around for a while. I think you can I think you can bias a little bit towards those defensive stocks, the food companies, the things that people have to buy regardless, right? Or the utility companies or, or what have you. That's actually my question, and Len, you just answered it, uh, which is. I felt like you did. I recently read a Goldman Sachs study that showed that they actually think that inflation is going to moderate once we get the issues with shipping taken care of, that you're going to see inflation actually come back down and be fairly normal again in a much shorter time frame than I would imagine. Now, you know, I like my point of view, Len, and your point of view, but Goldman Sachs has reams of information. So, so Paula, where do you stand? Are you more on the, on the Len side of this, inflation's here to stay, or are you more on the Goldman Sachs side that it's going to moderate? I'm on the side that I cannot predict the future. And oh, oh, listen to you. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> and any attempt to soothsay, to gaze into a crystal ball, or to ask the magic eight ball is nothing more than just a bit of guesswork. But that guesswork. doesn't stop us from asking the eight ball in two weeks anyway. <laughs> we still will. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Oh. Ooh. Foreshadowing. The signs say no. The signs say no. The magic eight ball says no. All right. Well, then we'll have to have another uh, stacking Benjamins a year from now to find out whether or not the magic eight ball was correct. On inflation. I'm not sure what we even asked it, but you think the show's going to be here? I think we asked it whether or not we should be asking it. (laughs) That's right. Yes. But yeah. Joe, to your question, um, while I I have the humility to know that I cannot compete with the reams of data from Goldman Sachs, nor can I compete with the uh, bars of gold that Len's been sniffing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> that's Paula's number one quote for the whole year. <laughs> I fondle my bars, Paula. Oh, okay. 
And Len's worst one. Len. Across the line. Len, this is a family show. I know. <laughs> there was a line. He found it. Um, but regardless of whether or not inflation is here to stay, uh, the reality is, number one, that those of us who have not experienced it previously now have a taste of what it's like and have a taste of what anticipation of future inflation is like, which can sometimes become a self-fulfilling prophecy in and of itself. Mm. Yeah. And number two, to to Goldman Sachs's point about the supply chain disruptions, most of us have never experienced that either. I mean, like we've lived in a nation and a time where we have access to anything we want whenever we want it, um, <laughs> assuming that we have sufficient capital to be able to procure it. And so the idea that even people with money can't obtain goods because of upstream supply chain disruptions, I mean, it's kind of a uh, it makes reality a little bit more real. It is funny when you put it that way, that for the first time in most of our lifetimes, we can't get the crap we need right when we want it and we are pissed about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, I, I'm going to jump in here because Paula, once again, that was my number two was the supply supply chain stuff. Well, let's and do my- it. Let's actually go there, Len. So so supply chain lesson yeah, is so, your So what second. I had, what I, what I learned from that, and, and this is the first time I think I can remember uh, sh- other other than the gas shortages of the – which were self-inflicted, by the way, but that's another story – of the 1970s. This is the first time I have really widespread supply chain issues. Um, so I think that one of the things I learned here, of course, is always be prepared. But there's a few things you need to do in addition to that or as part of that. One of the things I'll talk about right off the top is a couple months ago, our refrigerator was pretty old. And I saw these supply chain things happening. And I told the honey bee, I said, you know what? I don't want to risk uh, our refrigerator going down <laughs> and then we can't get a refrigerator. So even though our refrigerator was still running, it was uh, the old one was 12, 11, 12 years old. I said, let's try and get one now, or at least worst case, we have to wait nine months. At least our old one is still working. So that's what we did. We went out and we went and got a new refrigerator. Luckily, we only had to wait a few weeks for it. Uh, but that's okay. That's, you know, but we were proactive. And so that's one thing you want to do is you want to think ahead. You want to plan ahead. The other thing you want to do is you want to be maintenance on things at home and your anything mechanical, your cars, be proactive. Don't let something go down and then be caught flat footed because a mechanic doesn't have a part or what have you. Make sure you're thinking that way. Stock up on essentials. I talked about that uh, just with the corn, uh, but that was for inflationary purposes. But you know what? If there's certain things you really enjoy and you're what afraid they might so, not be here. Glenn, I just want to be clear. Is the gestation period for a new refrigerator nine months? Uh, <laughs> No, well, I don't know. I, I I just knew that my refrigerator was getting kind of long in the tooth, and I was a you know I was like you know what if my you know what if the yeah, refrigerator goes out right and and uh, it's nine months till you get a refrigerator. Yeah, we had you know? end tables come this last week that took eight months. So so there yeah I've heard stories of of people having to wait for freezers more not more so freezers than refrigerators but I've I've heard uh, one guy went to a Best Buy for freezers they had one freezer in the entire in the entire store. And it was like an off brand. And the guy said, I'll take it, you know, because otherwise it was like a nine month wait for, for the freezers, assuming that that number was reliable. So, you know, that Len needs to come out to uh, Nebraska furniture mart here in Dallas, Texas, because I have a business idea. <laughs> if hmm. y'all can't get refrigerators over in California, you and I are in the, are in the refrigerator business. We're just, <laughs> transport them from here over to there. <laughs> now we're talking about refrigerator arbitrage will be the know. lesson <laughs> for 2022. And Len, did you see like, the expression long in the tooth? Your refrigerator was getting long in the tooth? Right. Yeah. Long that, in the, long in the. You've heard that, right, Paul? Long you've in the no, freon. No, I don't think I've heard <laughs> long that. In the, you've never heard the term long in the tooth? Long in the tooth. That's a new one. Oh, no. man. <laughs> we we need a spinoff show, Joe, just on educating Paula. That could be hilarious. Oh. But, but let me give my one last point. Because yes. is- I think these are good. With as much fun as we've been having, Len, these are fantastic. <laughs> the, the one last thing I think you want to think about is, is things that you're not aware of. Sit down and think of blind spots that you have that, that you might need down the road 
and you don't want to be caught without. Like, um, for example, I just heard that uh, air conditioners are one. I've heard the, the price of air conditioners are going to be doubling between October this year mm. and February of next year. The price of an air conditioning unit is doubling. Jump on it now so, while you're. So uh, jump on it now. Yeah. If you if you don't delay, you know, think about things like that that you don't want to be caught of. I mean. It's just uh, nothing worse than needing something and you can't find it. And those are all fantastic, but you can also see why Len Penzo lives in a bunker right there. Hey, let me give you one more thing on the inflation. I forgot to yes. bring this up too. This was – here's something you got to watch too because this happened to me. Don't leave things in your shopping cart when you're buying things online and think you're going to come back a week later because you'll find that – they can jack up the price. The price will it'll be sitting in your cart, and then you come back a week later, and the price went up. Oh, probably so also that. makes it makes it too then a great time for price comparison, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. Oh, gee, bring this thing home, man. What is uh, your lesson? Last lesson from twenty twenty one. I think just kind of the last two years, this one has been pretty obvious to a lot of people, and um, you know, y- y- you got to take care of yourself. And we're seeing it a lot with the proverbial great resignation, you know, and there's a lot of lessons as it relates to, you know, work environment and that sort of thing. But, um, but if you're not happy, you've got to figure out a way to make yourself happy. I think, uh, I think the biggest lesson is, is that, uh, you are in charge of your own happiness. So if that means a new job or a new job location, or you're moving, or you're going to go live in the mountains instead of the beach, whatever, do whatever makes you happy because we don't know about tomorrow. All right. That's going to do it for today, everybody. Let's see what's going on where all of you live. Uh, Mr. Penzo, what's happening at lenpenzo.com? Well, uh, I have go have a little discussion on uh, prices ending in nine and the psychology <laughs> behind it and what the psychologists say. And is it real? Does it really work? And uh, if it does work, why does it work? It's not for the reason you might think. Oh, wow. And that's only at lampenzo.com. Oh, and the persistent itch. <laughs> of course. It's a, almost always forget to mention the sister site. Yeah. Speaking of sister, Paula Pant only lost by 30 bucks, sister. I know, right? So close. $30 between so you and close. winning. If only you'd invested that 30 but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, this gives me confidence for next year. It does. Yeah. She moved into, well, second closest. I don't know if that means you weren't in a tie with Len. I think you still were, but still. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think this bodes well for my trivia performance next year. Well, what what's happening to end out the year at affordanything.com? On the Afford Anything podcast, our friend Doc G who the Stacking Benjamins community knows very well, he joins me to talk about life lessons that he's learned as a result of being a hospice doctor. Oh. And it's an uplifting conversation. I, I intentionally wanted to do it at the end of the year because it's a very reflective conversation on what matters, you know, what's important, what's not, and how do we take this information and use it as we think through what we want for 2022 and beyond. What a smart gentleman he is, and I'm sure that's a fantastic conversation with the two of you. Thank you. Thank you. So yes, that's at the Afford Anything podcast. Where finer podcasts are found. OG, what do you got going on? You're going to celebrate with all your winnings? Oh, you betcha. (laughs) Yes, sir. Bob. You had a birthday a couple days ago. Happy birthday. Yes, it's still my birthday month. Yes, that's right. day on that day, we had a life goal. I got to check a box, like a, you know, bucket list check. So that was cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's Christmas, so I got kids, we got the whole Christmas thing going down. It's fun. Well, Merry Christmas to those of you that celebrate. Thanks for hanging out with us. Doug, you're going to take it from here, my friend. What should we have learned today? Well, Joe, first take blockchain and crypto seriously or don't it's here to stay, but it's also speculative. So do your homework and make sure it's an appropriate portion of your investment for portfolio based on your overall goals. Second, the 2021 market said, hold my beer and got weirder than ever. In periods of high inflation, buy canned corn. You may get a bigger return on those tiblets <laughs> than blue chip stocks. Said more intelligently by OG, the market will remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent. So don't make critical decisions like paying for tuition or your grocery budget based on penny stock speculation. 
But the big lesson, when it comes to holiday beverages, just remember it ain't a party until you're holding a drink with two animal byproducts. Thanks to Paula Pan for joining us today. You'll find her podcast, Afford Anything, wherever you're listening to us today. Thanks to Len Penzo for joining us. You can find Len Penzo at lenpenzo.com or behind the bar at his local adult entertainment establishment. Our show is written by Paulette Perhatch, who helps writers power their words, their work, and their earning potential with her Powerhouse Writers Coaching Program. Find out more at powerhousewriters.com. Thanks also to our team who made today possible. Karen Rapine is our producer. Tina Eichenberg and Gertrude Smith are our social media mavens. And Brooke Miller handles the show notes and our amazing newsletter, The 201. But the most special thanks to Eggnog. Eggnog. Because you can't drink Mrs. Butterworth in public. At least, not without a paper bag around it. Welcome to the after show. This is the part of the show that doesn't exist for those of you hanging out with us on Fireside. Uh, what happens in the after show stays in the after show. And uh, you know what? I did have an after show planned, but then you guys asked. I, I know this is a shock to people who've heard the show before, but I'm like, oh, let's not do that. How about if we play a bonus round of uh, trivia just for fun? And we will see. <gasps> yeah. Yes, because we had it ready for the tiebreaker anyway, Paula. Ooh, I can't wait to hear what this is. Yes. All right. Uh, so we're, this we're is my shot or redemption. Just so we're clear, though, I mean, like, it's not like ta- Paula can tie here, right? No, I mean, it's over. OG has yeah, no. won. No, it's this over. this is just for fun. Yes. Okay. This, this is, is like, to figure hey, out who the second some, loser is. Let's get one is. thing clear here. Paul, misery loves come. Paula is in last place like me. We both had the same I score. I tied for last. Yeah, that's right. With, with me, Paula. <laughs> with me. Don't, so, Doug, don't give her an extra half point because she was a little bit closer on that rum question. What we will do, though, we will flip the person that gets to guess last, though. Len, you'll get to guess last this time. We'll do oh. that. How oh, about wow. that? Yes. Ooh. The champ still has to go first because he's going to get the trophy. <laughs> so uh, speaking of trophy, you ready to do this, Doug? All right. Oh, God, yes. Let's do this again. Here we go. Oh. oh, music and everything. Okay. In the spirit of the seriousness of this competition, I hold in my hand. It's a trophy. I'm holding a trophy purchased by our one and only amazing producer, Karen Rapine. Let me tell you about this trophy. I mean, you just, you, you, I can't describe it gloriously enough. Fittingly, it's made of the best plastic you can buy at a dollar store in Montana. And because we are so bougie, it costs way more than a dollar. And notably, I got to admit, this doesn't look great on a shelf next to your kid's U8 third place soccer trophy. But hey, it's something. It's a thing. So here's the big tiebreaker question. How much, including tax, did our producer Karen Rapine pay for this magnificent trophy for our winner? I thought this was the perfect, just the perfect tiebreaker. So, uh, OG, you're going first as the champion. Take your victory lap. What's, uh, how much is is your trophy? $7, $7.47. cents. Seven forty-seven. Miss Paula Pant. $15.99. 1599 Len Penzo. Did you did you say it was a you got it at a dollar store? We did, but it cost way more than a dollar. We did say that too. Because you're like, all, duh, a dollar. That's all relative. So would you say, <laughs> say four fifty? Len, go with four fifty again. <laughs> you got seven forty seven. Four hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> seven just to show my competitive spirit, Chelsea Brennan. I'm gonna Chelsea Brennan you anyways, OG. So 746, 746. And you know what? We don't have dramatic music. We don't have anything. And we're a little over on time, except a drum roll here. I'm going to do it on the desk. Uh, Drum roll on the card table. Doug, what's our answer? 
The answer is $9.99. That makes Len Penzo our winner. No, Len Penzo is the loser. He went under. He went went under. under. He's the double loser today. You know what? That would have been a, I should, That's and I just, I just plugged my story about prices ending in nine. Right. That would have been perfect. It would have been perfect. There, you, you had it right there, and you my Chelsea goodness. Brendan the wrong side. Len, I tried to hand it to you, I'm but sorry. they all got smart and got their yeah. calculators out. And you know what really sucks is now it's I got to wait a whole nother year to get that darn trophy back. So, <laughs> but maybe next year there will actually be cake. <laughs> maybe they're, let them eat cake. The cake is a lie, Paula. Remember, the cake is a lie. It's a lie this year. But what about next year? There's always the the hope of future cake. We don't even know if it's actually a lie. If this dude, calls, that, that, that's a professional Watch podcast. A cake show up. It's it's totally a professional podcast when I'm my excuse is if that dude emails me, there might be cake. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. All right, let's get out of here, everybody. See ya.